Hi students, this is Dr. Martino again. So this is the next slide after the individual isometric contraction curve for an individual sarcomere. This curve in front of you now represents, again, this is in skeletal muscle, the length, length, tension, tension, the amount of force that can be produced, relationship between um, or in an entire muscle. Okay, so before we were talking about an individual sarcomere within a muscle, like the bicep, now we're actually talking about the entire muscle. Okay, so on the x, on the y axis, excuse me, of tension is a percent of maximum. So the maximum amount that your muscle can produce is 100%, right? You can't produce more than 100% force by definition. The length. The length of an individual muscle rests somewhere between eh, about 90% or about 0.9, right? And on this curve, 2.0. Okay, so most of this portion of the curve from about, um, you know, here, about 1.3 uh, to 2.0 is hypothetical if you had a detached muscle from the bone, but you don't, okay? But the, the curve continues anyway. So what does this show? There are three parts to this figure. You have in the dotted line here, the amount of force and length of the actual muscle itself, the contractile units, okay? This is the amount of force that can be developed by the sarcomeres, all of the sarcomeres of the bicep. The blue curve represents the force production or the capability that's called passive. And this takes advantage of the elastic fibers that sit in between your muscle fibers and are also part of the tendons. Okay, so you have elastic fibers, you have elastic tissue. The red represents the total force production of that particular muscle. When you add total force produced by the contracting muscle and total force that can be added to that by the stretched rubber band elastic fibers, you get total force production. And that peaks somewhere over here, but again, this is a theoretical part of the curve. So really what we're dealing with most of the time sits at about here, okay, from here. Everything from about 1.3 back to about 0.9. Okay, so let's give you an example. If, you've, if you're an athlete, if you've ever seen an athlete train with plyometrics, right? Plyometrics is jump training. It's elastic training. What are they doing? Well, if you want the muscle fibers themselves, the sarcomeres, to get stronger, you have to have a progression, right? You have to have a training program that uses progression where you expose the muscles over time to more and more external load, right? Just enough so that it can recover. That's going to make this dotted line curve here go up, right? Go up. But what's going to make this passive blue line go up is you have to train the elastic fibers. Well, how do you do that? Jump training. So your fibers are essentially rubber bands, and these rubber bands can get more springy over time if you train them how to be more springy over time. Okay? So this is why professional Olympic caliber, NFL, baseball, a major league, hockey, whatever, pick your, pick your professional sport athletes. They not only train with heavy weights to make this dotted line improve, but they also do a lot of jump training, okay, and a lot of speed training, and that takes advantage of this elastic fibers. So when you add them together, you get a synergistic effect essentially that is greater than either the um, the passive or the developed fiber force. And so what you get is a maximum total here, which should be about 100%. Now that 100% changes as you get stronger, but you're still at 100%.
Okay, and that's something we can talk about at another time, what percent, what that means. But you're always at, your maximum is always going to be 100%. Okay, so what this shows is that the sweet spot for producing the most force, right? Remember the resting length is about one to 110 percent 100 to 110 percent which is about here in this graph it's a little bit over it's it's off by a little bit it shows it about 120 130 but it's actually it's off a little bit that's okay it's roughly about 110 percent which is where this peak should be and with at this point if you draw a straight line over to the tension curve you get to be about 75 percent of total as a percentage of your total max, right? So if you only use the sarcomeres potential, you're only ever gonna use 75% of your total strength potential. In order to get to 100%, you need to involve this explosive or elastic recoil part, which is this passive amount here. And again, if you add the two together, the blue line and the dotted brown line, you ultimately get the red line. So the bottom line is to get maximum force production, you've got to be at about 110% of length because that gives you the sweet spot for the sarcomeres, uh, production of force, all of the sarcomeres together, this dotted line, and takes advantage of this part of the curve here, of the elastic fibers, and you take this and you add it to this, and you get this. So that's what this is. This is this is the force tension relationship between um, for um, an entire muscle, like the biceps or the quads or the hamstrings or the calves. Right. This is what it would look for, look for for an entire muscle. What we saw previously is what it looked like for an individual sarcomere, and that looks a lot like this brown dotted curve. So that's it. That's all you need to know. Hopefully that's good for you. If not, please um, email me or let's do a virtual office meeting or a call. Have a great day.